Richard Dawkins was perhaps the most well-known of the new atheists. But he's used Easter weekend to make clear that, culturally at least, he remains a Christian. I sort of feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Uh, It's true that statistically the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down. uh, And I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, um, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches. Um, So I, I count myself a cultural Christian. I think it would matter if we... Certainly, if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be tr- truly dreadful. Now, what Dawkins is responding to and endorsing there, I think, is a bit of a moral panic about London having prominent lights wishing people a happy Ramadan, um, but not prominent lights, or at least less prominent lights, wishing them a happy Easter. In terms of that current panic, this was just one representative headline in the British press on Easter Sunday. How Ramadan is muscling out Easter all over Europe, says the Daily Mail. 30,000 Ramadan lights festooned across London, a Muslim crescent flying atop Westminster Abbey, jam-packed mosques while church pews are fast emptying. Of course, it's not really Muslims' fault if Christian churches are struggling to fill their pews, but this is the panic of this Easter. Let's have a look at what Dawkins had to say. He's, as I say, in discussion on LBC with Rachel Johnson. Church attendance is plummeting. But the building, the erection of mosques across Europe, I think 6,000 are under construction and there are many more, I mean, are being planned. So do you think, do you regard that as a problem? Do you think that matters? Yes, I do, really. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I choose my words carefully. I mean, I, if I had to choose between Christianity and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. I mean, it seems to me to be a, a fundamentally decent religion um, in a way that I think Islam is not. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam fundamentally not decent like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the way women are treated. I mean, Christianity is not great about that. For, uh, it's had its problems with female vicars and female bishops and things. But there's an active hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the holy books of Islam. I'm not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are quite quite different. But the but the doctrines of Islam, the Hadith and the and the Quran, is fundamentally um, hostile to women, hostile to gays, um, and uh, I find that I like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single word of the Christian faith. That was Richard Dawkins on LBC. Um, Worth pointing out, it it turns out he has been referring to himself as a cultural Christian since 2007. I'm not sure if he's done it sort of in in such a sort of uh, vociferous way as that. Ash, what did you make of that, that Easter intervention from Richard Dawkins? I mean, he has been saying this kind of thing for ages, referring to himself as a cultural Christian, talking about how he prefers the sound of Evensong to the Mm. Muslim call to prayer. And this is just a lot of words for, I'm white. And I feel culturally white and English and dressing it up as a sort of battle between what the superior religious culture is. Like it really is just a load of, of nonsense. When you drill down into uh, religiosity in this country, where church attendance is on the increase isn't in these, you know, very old, you know, palatial cathedrals built hundreds of years ago. It's in the shop front churches, which are being attended, you know, predominantly by immigrants and their descendants. You know, the face of contemporary Christianity in this country is very, very different from what it used to be 50, 60, 70 years ago. And I think that that's something that, you know, a lot of this hooting and hollering misses because they're not talking about, you know, a sense of affinity with the real life Christianity of this country. What they're talking about is a sense of national and ethnic identity, which is defined 
against Muslims being the sort of, you know, barbarous, intrusive and invasive other. Right. That, that's what this whole thing is about. And I think that you see this quite clearly when people talk about Judeo-Christian culture, right? Judeo-Christian civilization, the cleaving together of two of the Abrahamic religions and saying, no, 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 the other one's on the outside. One, there's a certain irony in that the biggest pogroms and the most atrocious anti-Semitic acts of violence ever perpetrated in human history have been committed by Christians. Um, and two, like the, the you know, original beef here, right, in terms of, you know, scripture was, you know, the emergence of this, you know, new cult out of Judaism, which called itself Christianity. But the reason why these two things get lumped together is to try and, I think, add some kind of feeling of antiquity and spirituality to what is essentially a geopolitical posture. And I think that's just what's going on with Richard Dawkins. And I think that a lot of that was what was being expressed through the so-called new atheist movement of, you know, him and, you know, Sam Harris and Bill Maron and all those people. Because what you weren't talking about was a materialist critique of theism, um, which I think is perfectly legitimate, by the way, even important. Um, what they were trying to do is, you know, find ways to sneer at what they, you know, thought were, you know, stupid uncivilized people more often than not uh you know muslim in their eyes i wanted to cast and i think your, your your political ass is pretty spot on there i wanted to come from this from a slightly different angle because i know you you know you define as a muslim it's on your sort your, your twitter bio but we've never actually really spoken about religion on this show so i sort of wanted to are you are you a cultural muslim or are you how do, how would you sort of how would you relate to that sort of conversation Oh my god. Okay. Um Sorry, I should have really given you four warning for do, that, maybe. Yeah, fucking hell. I mean, <laughs> I do <sighs> culturally I feel Muslim. I celebrate Eid with my family, and those are things which are important. In terms of a belief in God, if I'm honest, I really go back and forth and sometimes I really feel that there is something beyond this world which provides order and some connection to something which is like eternity and sometimes I don't feel that and other times I think there might be that and I'm really mad at God for various reasons um at the moment I, I, I'm going through a little bit more of a phase of belief and you know it's because I'm, I'm grieving my, my dad and and I think that that's quite natural you sort of turn to religion to organize it experiences of, of grief and death but I'm not dogmatic and to be honest the reason why I'm not dogmatic is because no one in my family is every single person in my family has had a marriage which is either mixed religion or mixed race or both you know, my grandma was a Hindu who converted to Islam to get married to my grandfather. My mom's Muslim, married and divorced a Hindu, got married to a Church of England raised atheist. My Muslim sister's married to a Hindu. I'm married to a, you know, C of E slash Catholic atheist. He's got them both on both sides. So not much dogma in my family. Where are you on God, Michael? I would say I'm a cultural atheist because my parents were both atheists, not militant atheists, but they both left religion. So one of them left Catholicism, one of them left um, Protestantism. I mean, my mum left Catholicism and, you know, I think lots of people who leave Catholicism have a bit of a traumatic relationship to Catholicism. Uh, so I was very much brought up an atheist. I, I definitely don't believe in God, actually, but I am very, I'm growing ever more fascinated by religion sort of as I get older. So I'm very sort of like interested in the tradition and maybe like, you know, the meaning it offers people, the community. So I'm, I'm very much not a militant atheist, but I am quite fundamentally a non-believer, I think. I think, I think one, of the, one of the reasons, you know, we've, we've talked about this, you know, in various bits of Navarra content and also in the office where we've talked about fertility rates. Fertility mm. rates tend to be dropping in richer countries and they're also associated with uh, rising secularism. 
So you can generally say, you know, the more secular a society, the lower the fertility rate. Within secular societies, you have higher fertility rates within religious communities. And I think that there are multiple reasons for that. You know, one is that the more religious a culture is, the stronger the taboo on things like abortion, contraception, uh, same-sex relationships. Um, You often have a sense of it is, you know, your purpose on this earth to, you know, be fruitful and multiply. But there's also something which I think is often under-examined, which is religious communities tend to have a much stronger sense of community and, you know, responsibilities which extend beyond the family unit than secular communities do, which becomes an enabling condition for having children. And I think that's something which is really important, which is even if you are an atheist or even if you are agnostic, what can you learn from how religious communities organize themselves and what might you want to replicate? You've had a long conversation with Aaron Bastani, haven't you, on Downstream recently. Does the left need religion? If you want to hear more about this, you can check that out. Um, my own little plug as well. I, on Friday, I released a podcast with Peter Oborn about whether there is really a conflict between Islam and the West. Um, that's on my Crash Course podcast, which you can look up. Very interesting guy. He's written a really good book, actually, um, The Fate of Abraham, How the West Gets Islam Wrong. I've butchered the subtitle, but something along those lines. That's the point it's making. 